Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon or good evening. Depends where you are. So my name is Professor Dr. Saad Mikhailov, Dean Faculty of Engineering, University of Malaya, and also the Director of Power Electronics and Renewable Energy Research Laboratory at the same university. Today, I'm going to share with you on how we, the scientists and the researchers, can help tackle the problem of climate change. How we can use our research findings and knowledge to tackle these big problems which facing the humanity and also compromising the future generation life. As we know, climate change is a fact and we can see clearly the impact of climate change in our daily life. Before I start sharing with you what we should do, let me share with you the world populations will be 9 billion by 2050, according to the current growth. The energy consumption will be doubled by 2050. And this is a fact. Our, energy daily, our daily energy consumption is increasingly uh, or increasing day after day. You just look into your uh, surroundings and see how many gadgets that requires power or requires electricity to run. I can share you my personal experience. I came from a very small village in North Africa. 40 years ago, in the whole village, we used to have only one single car. And that car used to be for everything. To act as an ambulance, to act for emergencies, and so on and so forth. I went back to the same village 40 years later. And I was surprised to see there are village of cars in each house. What does this indicate? This indicates maybe the economic standing of the people has improved. Maybe people are getting wealthier. Maybe the technology have reached everywhere. But if we look at it from the energy point of view, we look in at, from the energy point of view, the energy consumption per person has increased significantly. Has increased significantly. Means instead of one car in the whole village now, we have many cars in each house. Even it's difficult for you to find the parkings, where to park. And as we also proven scientifically, 65% of global warming is due to the energy used and energy generations. Means the way how we use energy, the way how we generate it is not efficient. It's a time to start looking on how to improve these processes. And the effect can be clearly seen. We can we experiencing extreme weather condition. We see sea level rise in many locations around the globe. And in the past 50 years, the world has lost more than 25% of its topsoil and 30% of its forest. At the current emission rate, coral reefs and polar ecosystems will be severely affected by 2050. And it reached to a state where it becomes irreversible. Means whatever we do after that, we not change anything. So it's a time that we should act. We should do our level best to make the change now, not tomorrow. And we, as scientists and researchers, have a major role to play in this. And we have to lead the change. 
because we do want our future generations to suffer because of our actions. These effects have been seen on the ground and also on the sea. The sea level, ri the, the sea level rise, like I mentioned just now, and also the acid level in the oceans and the seas is increasing day after day and year after year. And this will severely impact the marine life. Every morning or evening when we open our TVs, we see floods. We see floods in different areas of the, the globe or different parts of the world where the floods never happened before for the last hundred years. These are signals of the climate change. If we don't see floods, we see drought in many areas where it used to be green places. So these are the, the signs of climate change. And this automatically will impact the people where and how they live. And it will severely impact even the future generations. Also, the earth temperature is increasing and can be seen also clearly this based on the statistics that's been provided by uh, different departments across the globe. So what we should do as scientists and as engineers, we cannot stop the energy demand. We cannot stop the increase of energy demand because the world population is increasing. So the only way is to try to make this energy efficient, uh, the energy processes more efficient. If we want to maintain the energy, uh, what we call the emissions from energy processes constant or stabilizing it, we need to introduce innovative ideas and solutions for people. One of them is the introduction of renewables, which we have seen in the last 20, 30 years, an increase, exponentially increase in terms of number of photovoltaic solar panels being used, wind turbines, in introducing of electric vehicles, and so on and so forth. It's the way forward. And uh, today, what I am going to share with you, I'm going to share with you two important points. One, which is, I have mentioned just now, renewables. There is no way forward. is just to increase the amount of renewables. And the second part, which is energy conservations. And I would like to quote here the ex-US President, Jimmy Carter. He says, energy conservation is an act of patriotism. This is what we expect from our politicians. This is what we expect from our leaders to be energy, uh, uh, what you call energy aware and uh, impact of the energy on the environment should be one of their prop, uh, one of their agendas. As the resources available, it's a huge. If you look into only the sun, the sun actually provides more than 2,850 times what energy we need daily. So if we only take a very small portion or very small percentage of this, it's enough to, to solve our energy crisis or our energy issues. Uh, according to statistics, in 2012, the world has consumed more than 20 trillion thousand hours of electricity. And 40% of it, this is just 40% of the total energy consumption or the total energy consumed. 20,000 trillion watt hours of electricity or of energy, which is equivalent to what is generated by 3,000 nuclear power plants. 
As we know, one nuclear power plant of one gigawatt is able to generate around 7 trillion watt hours per year. So it's equivalent to 3,000 nuclear power plants. So what I'm going to share with you, based on my experience, or based on my expertise as a power electronics engineer, I have been working for this area, in this area for the last 25 years, and I want to share with you how we can, we as power electronics, can help in solving this energy crisis or global warming or climate change issues. As we know, we, every day we use our appliances and our home, in our homes they are full of electrical, electrical appliances. And all of them they run on electricity. So if we, I just, we start with a simple example. Maybe you start with an air conditioning systems, which are very commonly used nowadays due to the heat. Okay. When you go to the market and try to purchase an air conditioning system, so you have a choice. You have a conventional air conditioning system and you have an inverter based air conditioning systems. What is the difference between the two? The main difference is maybe the, the conventional air conditioning system is cheaper. The inverter based maybe is more expensive. But from the energy point of view, the electric, the inverter based air conditioning systems save between 20 to 30 percent of energy compared to conventional energy systems. So if you, if you look at the long term or the return of investments, the inverter based air conditioning systems is the choice. And if we look into this air, uh, air conditioning systems, which is an inverter based, the main component of it is an inverter, which is a power electronics. Let us look into another very common example or common appliance that we use daily, which is the light bulbs or the lights. It is estimated that there are more than 50 billion bulbs across the globe. And it is already proven scientifically that if we, can, if we can change from the current bulbs to the LED bulbs, we can save almost 20, 20 times. Or the uh, light bulbs, the LED bulbs are 20 times more efficient compared to the conventional bulbs. So only by this, we can save a huge amount of energy. It's estimated to be equivalent to more than 450 nuclear power plants. So these are the things that power electronics can introduce and has been introducing and it has been proven that power electronics can help in reducing the emissions. The second component which I'm going to spend some time talking about is our electricity consumption based on statistics between 50 to 60 percent of it is consumed in the industrial sector. That depends on different countries, but globally, almost 50 to 60 percent of electricity is consumed in our industrial sector. It's a time to start giving incentives for industries and also put the regulations to introduce high efficient motors and also use variable speed drives and variable frequency drives. And it's already proven that variable speed drives can save up to 30% of energy consumed by these motors. So you just assume 30% of the total 60% of electricity consumed in industrial sectors is almost equivalent to what is generated by 30, 300 nuclear power plants. It's a time to start putting this regulation in place and introduce a change. The second topic which I'm going to share with you is the energy conservation. Energy conservation, it's uh, something very simple. It's something which is almost uh, zero investment cost. We don't need to do anything. 
but we can save the energy. What is energy conservation? Energy conservation is uh, as simple as use energy as you need. Don't overuse energy or use it just as the minimum level. I just give you an example. If you are sitting in an, a room which is powered by an air conditioner, why you have to set the temperature of the air conditioner to 19, where the comfortable temperature is around 24 to 25 degrees? Most of the time, we, we set the temperature as 20 degrees, and then we go and purchase a jacket to keep us warm. So this is, can be easily done. So this is what we call energy conservation. So when you leave your room or you leave your office, why you leave the light on? You just simply switch it off. When you, for example, you want to purchase some groceries from your nearby shop, why you need to drive? You can just simply walk. That is good for your health and also it will reduce the emissions, it will reduce the number of cars on the road, it makes the environment healthier and so on and so forth. So this is energy conservation. Energy conservation is a way of life. It's a way that every one of us have to live with and practice every day. And I always give this example to my students and my colleagues. When we walk from a room, walk out from the room, please switch off the lights and switch off the air conditioning systems. Or you switch off your computers. These are the things that we should do. And as I say just now, it does not require any investments or any savings. Maybe with the IoT and the Industrial 4.0 now, things are becoming more automated and more smart. Maybe the introduction of artificial intelligence in our houses and in our offices can also help in energy savings. But it's a time to start thinking on practicing energy efficiency measures in our daily life. I hope that my message is very clear. As a power electronics engineer, we have done a lot and we will continue to do uh, and innovate ideas and practices and devices to help our environments. Thank you very much.